<laughs> Tools that help me. Managing stress with yoga. Um, about a year ago, I started doing yoga from a mentor who also works with me, Maria Blom, who's right there in the audience today. <laughs> Two things to deal with stress. One is yoga, and number two, not worry about so much everything, especially when it comes to little things. Because if you worry about too much of everything, it could lead to health problems. Mm -hmm. so true. And like for three things I can think of that can lead to that. One, high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Two, arrhythmia. and Three ulcers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Medita so right. Meditation. I do meditation every single night before I go to bed, and that really helps me. So it helps me like go to bed fast, go to bed early, and help, help me fall asleep faster. And when I wake up in the morning, I feel totally refreshed, and I'm in a good mood. I've been in a good mood every single day for like the past few weeks. That's good. That's mm -hmm. And also, if you're stressful to everyone, <coughs> that can also drive them away. So true. Budgeting with money. Mm. I, I also have a worker that works with me, and I knew her from Pine Bush High School. She worked with Matt. Her name is Mary Jo Salvador. I like, spending is a common addiction. I, I used to love to bend, spend so much <coughs> than, I, than what I make, but ever since <coughs> she came <coughs> along, I've been doing much better at it. I don't go over $800 a month on my credit card. That's how well I've been doing. I'm naturally organized when it comes to scheduling. Some of people you people may, may know, OCDs have a tendency to be organized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to scheduling, I'm really organized. I know what my, when my doctor's appointments are, mm -hmm. dentist appointments, mm -hmm. what time I'm meeting my friends, or what time I'm spending time with family. I'm just usually good with that. <laughs> <laughs> With this way. Expressing myself in positive ways. That's the same thing when I express myself on social media when it comes to sharing aspiring quotes about autism and how I can relate to that. And they're always positive. My quotes are always inspirational. Okay. Let me make, my quote is, let me make my own mistakes because I actually learn from my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Brett D. Anthony. Mm -hmm. Avoiding mistakes is so stressful, exhausting, and pointless. Sometimes you're better off learning a mistake. If you make a mistake, you actually learn from it. And that's where I go back to my former ISS staff. I, my mom found out about it because there's a ISS portal that tells you the timesheet is, and you can just go on there and make sure it's right. And I also helped her find out about it because this is why you should never delete your text messages because I send him my schedule and because of that I found out about it. I compared my schedule to his and most of the time they were off, off. And ever since then, I should give my mom credit for this. She advised me to write it down 
and where we, when we're done, I take a picture of the timesheet and then I write it down. And I've been doing that ever, ever since and I have never had a problem ever since. Okay, any questions? How do you overcome? Yes, yes. Um, since I'm getting self-directed myself, and basically I'm autistic just like you, basically because, and also self advocate and a board member, like basically the self-direction field, you said people, like some of the mentors cheat on, on your sheets. Yeah, what, like where we're done with what we did, he writes down the, the stuff we did, but behind my back he wrote down the things we didn't do, just for the extra money. That's what's wrong. Yeah, there's some people that take advantage of you, mm -hmm. disabled or not. I know, I know one yes, answer because they don't care. That's true. Exactly. That's the problem in this world. People don't care. I know one mentor of mine is was really good with community and everything. Wanted me, want, tried to convince me to give up one of my mentors for extra hours because it wasn't my fault that he was lost the consumer, mm -hmm. basically. Because basically, I, because basically, I have to go through a lot of jobs myself since that mentor is no longer with me. He got in trouble with that agency, but I can't say names. Yeah, I couldn't do it either. Um, I feel more better, more confident. Even though I'm grateful for what I'm doing, give me the community and the volunteers and everything. It's basically when you, when he's basically like something like himself, he's all disabled from himself, basically. He tried to juggle everything at once and that's where he got to for, try to prove himself, which, which it was his undoing, trying to be more progressive towards it. Sorry to hear that. And that happened to a lot of people. Yes. You said you were getting speech therapy. Was there a physical reason why you couldn't speak or you just... I just something? couldn't speak, which is a common thing for young autistics at the time. And I was going to R and H Usler BOCES and I was in the BOCES program till I was 15 years old. Then I went to Pine Bush High School and then I graduated there. Thank any you. questions? Yes, Josh. Brett, were you three or, when you were diagnosed, were you at the age of three or four? Um, I think I was three years old, yeah. which is a common age yeah, that's to being diagnosed. That's probably about the same amount of diagnosis. Okay. Anybody else? I have one. Yes. When did you find out you had autism and how did you overcome it? Um, that is a good question. Um, I found out when I was, nine, 10, or 11 years old. And my mom started this, the Autism Movement years ago. I just found out about it. At first, I didn't really, I was kind of embarrassed because I didn't really understand it. But eventually, I got used to it. I just accepted it. You're better off accepting the fact that what you are, what you are. When were you autism? What? How old are you? How old are you? How old are you when you were autism? Um, I was three when I was diagnosed. Oh, yeah. Jordan, how old were you? Uh, how old were you when you went to the doctor? Uh, when I was five, two. Oh, and I was on the motor road. Are doctors more accepting of it now because? The prop, this is my grandson. When he was nine months old, he was starting to walk and starting to talk. And almost overnight, I knew there was a change in him. And I spoke to my son that I was worried about him because he stopped walking. He didn't want to talk anymore. He, you know, wouldn't look at me. My son took him to the doctor. They were so afraid to say something that he needed help because they said he was too young, even though the next time I went, I went with my son to advocate for him. And I said, I see him every day. There was a drastic difference in him. And I actually got very mad at him because they, doctors have such a long time frame to diagnose anything, just not autism. My one grandson wasn't walking when he was two years old his older brother, 
but they said they could walk between one and three. And I think had they intervened earlier, it might have helped him better with his mobility. So is that an issue with diagnosing with autism as well? Um, not that I know of. I didn't know it at the time that I was autistic. How old are you now? I am 27. I just turned 27 back in August. I see you at Shelfry. <laughs> Shelfry you work at? Working uh, hard. Uh, 211 in Middletown. Can I go to all the time? I thought you did. You have some heart rate, I'll tell you, pushing them carts. Yeah, it is not easy, but it's a hell of a workout. <laughs> I look at her right here, she works with Ray Sharp and Bailsgate. At least she don't, she don't have to push carts outside. <laughs> She's bagging groceries. Yeah. That's cool. I love to work out too. Like today, like I did, like I worked out for like almost three hours at the gym, and I know I don't work out that long. The thing is, this trainer, like her, Katia, her name's Katia. She was such an inspiration to me, but I was thinking about maybe asking her to be my personal trainer for Christmas. But she's so inspiring. Like when I first met her, I had like I had three day of training with her. Oh my gosh, she kicked my butt. It felt good. <laughs> and she, taught, yeah, she taught me how to do like bench, bench uh, lift things in the right way, and I have never felt so good. I have never felt so good about it. She she really inspired me and gave me more confidence. That's good, Stacy. <laughs> Yes, Uncle Craig. <laughs> tough one. Who's your favorite actor? <laughs> <laughs> that is a tough question. one, but I can name a few that I no, enjoy. No, just one. <laughs> Who's your favorite? I don't have a favorite. Oh, I can't oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favorite is the favorite actor? Who? Sylvester Stallone. Uh, yeah. uh, what? <laughs> what? You can't beat that. <laughs> no. Okay. Any questions? Yes. You mentioned that you ended up going to Pine Bush High School. What type of classes were you integrated in the regular classes and what was your experience when you went to Harvard? Actually I went to the IEP class. Which I was in. So did you take phys ed with? Yeah I know? did. Oh, okay. And how was your experience? Um, it was good. Okay. I think going to Punch Bush was the best thing that ever happened to me. I, the best part of it is I got to mingle with the kids with who weren't autistic which was kind of nice. I like right. socializing with different people. Cool. Yes. Oh, she's just showing you her badge. Her badge. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Yes, Josh. Brett, um, as far as uh, now they changed the name of the, the foundation, um, do you see yourself like being a role model for the organization and to speak publicly, publicly to others and to reach out with, uh, you know, the foundation that your parents started that they could give you the torch, so to speak, so that way you then, you know what I mean, going forward? Um, that I'm not really sure. Could you just specify? Basically, since they changed the name of the foundation from your parents' names, first the first names to the Anthony Foundation. Are they gonna enable you to somehow give you the torch, like to reach out to others in our community, in our county, to speak out of your success story and to motivate individuals on the spectrum like yourself and me and people we know? Possibly. This is just the beginning. It's his first talk, yeah, and I yeah, imagine that Brett will Amazing. really go places with yes, this. Robert. I think that's yes. a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two, two questions. First one is, the IEP class, does that happen to be a living skills program by any chance? IEP class? The, the, the IEP oh. program you took, at least the IEP diploma. Living skills program, they call it. When I took the, I think I took a similar class when I was in high school. Basically, they call it the Living Skills Program in North Rock High School. Before I moved over to Orange about 10 or 11 years ago, it's like similar to the program you had at Prime Bush. I did like what you went through. I went through BOCES. I got, they were able to get BOCES into Little World Middle School thanks to my mom's application. They were able, and I was able to go on to North Rock High School where my brother and my sister and I graduated from there. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Second question, um, 
I know you, this is your first time doing a presentation. Yes, it is. <clears throat> may, I, may I make a suggestion? Yes, go right ahead. Your name's Brett, right? Yes. May I make a suggestion of maybe I can help you hook up with uh, Goshen uh, Library. Goshen Library is a new library that I know people from. And I know several people from Goshen Library, Warwick, and Clear Lake. Would you like to do more presentations over there? Yeah, that's a good idea. I can help you with that. Thank you. And Brett, you're welcome to come over to the Palisade Center to the meetings there to do a presentation there during our city's meetings there. Thank you. And yes, also, sir. also, you can be invited to uh, my youth program. This is the youth coordinator for the town of Waco, Rosie. And I've hey, been part of Rosie. I've been part of the she's a retired uh, NYPD officer. She's a 911 responder, mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Let me tell you something. Me, and, I know me and you have been friends since like I know the 2000. Remember? Yeah. The buses. Yeah. We live. We live right down the road from each other. We live on Janus. So, mm -hmm. um, because me and you are all like we, we're open. We can give speeches. We like to express ourselves. Re I was like, as you know, I was like that, but I was really quiet, like you. Yeah. But when I came to her. When I met her through the program, she changed me a lot. Like I gave a speech at the what was it, the Coles Highland House event, and I don't know remember what I said, but <laughs> everybody was in tears. Oh, so no. yeah, I had like her daughter was telling me the other day, you're not, you don't have special needs, you're, you're special. Amen. But she yeah. has, you know, she's done a lot for me. But I would like for you to come to our program. We have our third meetings of every Tuesday of the month. From seven to nine, you know what the community center is behind Cosmos. Yeah. Because you lived in Waco all your life. Yeah. So, it's from seven to nine. If you want to sit down and talk to her, and discuss what you can do to change our program, speak to at our meetings. You're more than welcome to. Um, I got a question for you. What yeah. kind of program is it? It's um, it's a it's a youth program. It's through the town of Waco Police Department. We volunteer for um her. Through the police department for the <laughs> 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 yeah. really interesting. It is. Anyone can join. It's from sixth grade to twelfth, but anyone after that can join. So it's like we're we always do looking for mentors I'm and we're always looking for people to come and help me in the program. We do a lot of different community services and of course the program is open to all Orange County residents free of charge. And like he said, the it's uh, sixth grade to twelfth graders are the students, the youth that we're looking for. So, but again, we have everybody else, all the volunteers that want to come into the program and the college kids that would like to come in and mentor and also do internship with the program they can. And we in. have our anti-bullying travel team. Yes. So we're always trying to <laughs> tell kids to stop being a bully or if you were a bully or if you got bullied, mm -hmm. speak, speak about it. Because she sits down with the kids, she sits down with the parents. And if you were ever bullied, I don't know if you ever were, but you no. can. Thank no, God. no, but I'm just saying if you know if you haven't knew anybody who was bullied, come to the town of Walco, police, uh, police youth collision. She can help you. Like for example, our event we're having on Sunday, we're having our softball versus the town of Walco cops from ten at the ballpark in Walco, around ten thirty. So we're always you're all invited. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> you ever course. have autism before? Yes, I have autism. Oh, you do I, I, me and Brett went to summer school for about the same amount of years because I the first year I met Brett was during summer school. I was six years old. He lived right down the road from me. The bus picked me up. Um, he his mom put him on the bus. He sat right across from me. He was quiet as well. So <laughs> what we were used to do every summer, the, our bus driver Harriet. Yeah. So she would give us potato chips every single summer. <laughs> <laughs> she would. She would buy chips for the kids. <laughs> um, what you call it? Um, and we would have the carnival at at Bosey's every single year. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So, me and Brett have known each other since we're like this little. He's two years older than me. I'm 25. He's 27. But he's not a bad. He's like me. You know, we're we're special. But you know what? We it depends on the heart. So I have autism. Yes, he's got autism. But we went to Pinebush as well. Like Did we went to same. Did you overcome it after you found out you had it? Yeah. Like for example, when I was three. I couldn't talk to the age of three. They said it's not normal for a little kid to not talk. So they took me to my pediatrician. So they did an exam and said he might have autism. He might not have talked again, but I, I started talking. And ever since I started talking, I don't shut up. Same thing as when I was two, 
it was a little bit hard. Wouldn't be able to talk, but now I'm talking. And yeah, that's good. Because let me tell I you mean, something. <clears throat> when I came to her, she met me as this quiet. I was 18 when I came. Like for example, I just got an award for being in the program for the past eight years because mm -hmm. I did all the work that I did for the program. I'm still doing it. it this keeps me busy. That's you know, and I don't know if you see my post on Facebook or anything yeah. like that. Like, for example, we did our peace, love, and hope ceremony back in May. We, we expressed about the program at Monhagen Middle School. So it's like, you know, that keeps me going. You know, I'm disabled. I get an SSI check, but I can't work over $35. Otherwise, I lose my whole check. But I keep myself going. I do have anxiety, and I suffer from depression. That I'm diagnosed with. Me too. Yeah, so that's how you know. And I did get speech. I got OT for my back. I got counseling. But you know what? I'm grateful that I got the help that I did because you know what? If I was never in special ed, I never would have gotten the help. Yeah. Yeah, how come you said what, if you get a check from your, you work, right? No, I don't. I, I'm disabled. I get a uh, mm -hmm. disabled, disability check, mm -hmm. SSI. But I can't make over $35. Otherwise, I will lose my Who told you that? Social Security. Yeah, that, that's, bull, that's baloney. <laughs> it's like if you make over seven hundred something see, dollars, then you they start to die. I make eight hundred and something. And I had to go to the police and tell them that it was someone that I knew and I worked in their <coughs> program and I also lived in their program, ate the same food for seven days. Mm. And I had my hair pulled for it. Uh, what was that? Was that was was that it was a mental institution. That that was Bletchworth wow. Village. That was partly that, and another institution we'll that was in like six different institutions, and I got physically abused. I'm so sorry, sorry to hear that. So sorry. Yes, Stacy. Yes, I have a story. Like when I was like nine years old, like I think I thought I my parents saw something that was wrong with me and everything. Like the thing was, they went to it. They took me to a doctor and thing, a neurologist in in the, in, in uh, Hagen. The name was started Hagen. So I don't remember what it was, but. He, he, my parent, people are saying that it was probably trust syndrome because he's like, no, it was not trust syndrome, and then it's not that. But anyway, I was on medication for like since I was nine years old and everything. And when we went to the, they took me to this doctor and everything when I was uh, 13 years old, like in uh, Kingston, New York City. He, they said like they did a couple of tests on me and they said it was trust syndrome. So I was found out. I found out I was I had trust syndrome at nine, at 13 years old and. When I was in middle school, like I was being teased for like two years, and like I would go home, come home after school, like pretend like nothing's wrong, thing, like nothing happened, and everything. And then my parents found out at, when I was in eighth grade that I was being teased and everything. And my mother felt so bad; she was covered in tears and everything. And the parents of the the kids who teased me would not write any, wouldn't write any note, write a, a apology note or anything. Like all oh, these kids, like they don't know better, which they should. And the thing is. I, when I was in the freshman year, everything got okay, and I, the thing is, I kind of had a speech problem myself because I went to a lot of speech therapy classes from preschool to sophomore year. I got a little better at it. I just, but the thing is, like, I, I try, I read a little bit, but I just take my time with reading. And when I was a senior, when I graduated senior class, I graduated an IEP diploma first because I had one more test to, to pass, and I failed it by one point, but I didn't want to give up and everything, so. I decided to take that test again, and I finally passed it and got my resident diploma. And the thing is, um, I, I started my job as a record in 2011, and everything, uh, March, 11, March of 2011, and I've been there for like, next year in, in March will be nine years I've been working there, and that's a huge successful. And